This book read like if DeviantArt and the worst of fanfiction.net had come alive and agreed to do a collab. Hi, I'm Megan, and this is A Dark and Hollow Star. A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth is a whopping 512 pages, and you feel the exact amount of time it takes to read every one. So let's dive into why this book took me a month to read for no good reason other than violence. The ironborn half fey outcast of her royal family, a tempestuous fury exiled to earth from the immortal realm and hellbent on revenge. A dutiful fey prince determined to earn his place on the throne, and the prince's brooding guardian burdened with a terrible secret. For centuries, the eight courts of the folk have lived among humans, concealed by magic and bound by law to do no harm to mortals that they interact with. This arrangement has long kept peace in the courts, until a series of gruesome and ritualistic murders rocks the city of Toronto and threatens to expose fairies to the human world. Four teens, which hold a key piece of the truth behind these murders, must form a tenuous alliance in their effort to track down the mysterious killer behind these crimes. If they fail, they risk the destruction of the fairy and human worlds alike. If that's not bad enough, there is a war between the mortal and immortal realms, and one of these teens is destined to tip the scales, and the only question is, which way? Let's start with the positives, I guess. This book takes place in Canada, which is cool. It's nice to see a place that isn't New York or Boston or LA or random middle America run downtown. It was a change in fictional scenery. It's also about fairies, big fan. I like books that take place within the courts of the folk, and I especially enjoyed the fact that there was a separation between the Seelie and Unseelie factions of Fae. I also really enjoyed how the main characters in this book are queer, but that isn't their whole story. Their orientations are woven into the plot so that it becomes a part of their characters and not the character itself. That being said, the overwhelming negative of this book is that it tells and doesn't show. It spends ages describing characters down to the last piercing because what they are wearing and what irreverent pop culture reference they can make are their personalities. I didn't care about a single character despite them having some interesting beats. Nausicaa used to be a fury and she's condemned to Earth. Arlo doesn't fit in anywhere because she straddles the line between the Fae and human worlds. Vehan is a prince on a precarious pedestal and Aurelian has some cool hobbies, I guess. The way all of this is described made me not care about those because they are so mired in description that it doesn't show me anything. That and the entire book wasn't innovative. A standard four-act story structure that was filled with cliches. I give this book 2.5, maybe 3 stars. I finished it because I wanted to know what was going to happen and thought, then I'll be done. But they shouldn't really waste time on a sequel when the first book wasn't worth the paper. 